I've made up my mind. My mind hasn't changed since I've seen it. The rating is just pretty simple for me. This movie is a solid. All right, so Transformers 1 is a new animated Transformer film starring Chris Hemsworth, Brian Tyree Henry, Scarlett Johansson, and Kegel Mike and Key. Y'all have some spoilers here, so if you didn't see the movie yet, please go check it out first. It's worth it. And then come back and definitely listen to this review. The story follows Optimus before he becomes Optimus Prime. He's just a lonely mind worker named Orion Pax, who's ironically very optimistic. He travels around with his then best friend D-16, who we know ultimately becomes Megatron. For those who don't know, D-16 was the original designation of the Megatron figure way back in the day, but that's a whole nother story. They represent sort of a low class on the Transformers Cybertron level of wealth where they would just work in a mine, they can't transform, which they think is just something that's available to some at birth and some not. Through the curiosity of Optimus, or Orion Pax as he's called then, he's journeying out to find the Matrix of Leadership, which would bring Energon back onto their planet and restore it to its glory so they don't have to be working in the mines all day. They're told this great legendary story about the Primes, who were the great protectors fighting a war against the Quintessons and how they disappeared and lost the matrix of leadership sometime in between there. And the last Prime, Sentinel Prime, is continuing to search for it. I think the backstory was pretty good and straightforward, but complex enough to keep you interested. I'm not sure if I ever heard this exact story in the comics and definitely not in any of the shows that I watched, the former cartoons, but it did take bits and pieces from things and I did recognize some of the concepts and ideas and characters and that was pretty cool but I think it's somewhat of a fresh retooling of the story. Ultimately through their journeys they find out that of course everything that Sentinel Prime was saying is a lie and that he's really working for the Quintessons and basically forcing them to be sort of like slaves and their ability to transform is not a defect. They actually were taken from them at birth by Sentinel Prime, which causes Megatron to go on a crazy, rapid, downward spiral and want to kill him. The first act of the movie is pretty simple. We get to see the camaraderie between Optimus and Megatron before they became who we know them to be. And I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I think it was great. The introduction of the characters, they introduced Bumblebee in a great way. And I feel like the whole first act of the movie really brought you in and you felt the warmth within it. It was kind of like Toy Story, I would have to compare it to where Woody and Buzz, you kind of felt like the warmth in it, even though it was a fully animated project, it was it had a lot of heart to it. And I really enjoyed the first act of the film. The second act of the film was built on them finding out that everything Sentinel Prime told them was pretty much a lie and that he wasn't this great hero who was looking for the matrix of leadership so he could bring glory to Cybertron, but he was actually working for the enemies, the Quintessons, which they thought the war was over when the Primes fought them. This made the film take a complete turn and Megatron went very far from where he was to where he ended up being once he found out he was lied to and his downward spiral began rapidly. The introduction of Starscream, Soundwave, and Shockwave was pretty well done in my opinion because they kind of introduced them in a way that they weren't part of the main line story going on, but they weren't too far off that they didn't connect to the story by making them part of the high guard, which gave them their own faction sort of identity and gave a reason for a Starscream and Megatron to kind of have a little bit of beef on who's the top dog, which we know is a through line through every Transformer property. So I think that was really good because Starscream uh characters like Jetfire and the Seekers and stuff always had this weird maybe Autobot kind of Decepticon when we need to be type of thing going on and this just kind of grounds it in the roots of how that can play on in further films if they do continue which I believe they are. I did very much love the second act of the film it brings so much to the story so many oh crap moments uh, we got to see so many things, the surface of Cybertron, we got more of the backstory. I think it was really great. I feel like it could have been a little longer, it was a little rushed, but I did enjoy it overall. The third act of the film is pretty much exactly what you expect. Uh, everything comes to a head between Optimus, Megatron, and Sentinel Prime. We get big, big fights here and there. Sentinel Prime's right-hand man, or should I say right-hand woman, Black Arachnia, which I think was a great choice. She was extremely menacing. And originally I was like, how does a spider fit into the show? But she was actually 
like a drone helicopter, which was a pretty cool transformation in it. It worked for me a lot. It really worked for me. And this character to me was a standout character. Like I said, this spoilers here. What happened to her was pretty unfortunate, but I think she brought up the terrifying level of Sentinel Prime and his armada just raised the bar super high. And I think it was a great play. Ultimately, the ending of this film and how I feel about it, we didn't get Autobots and Decepticons all throughout the film, which was great, even though I, you know, I really enjoy Autobots and Decepticons, but it was great to just have them as Cybertronians and just let's just see how their world was before this great war that everything is usually based around came about. And they touched on it on some of the other shows, things in here and there, but I think they did a pretty good job here of expressing just the feel of Cybertron. That's what we really wanted. We don't get that from any of the Bay films or anything like that. So it was really good to get that feel, that feel in a feature film on screen the ending continued to optimus finally getting the matrix of leadership something that we all knew what was going to happen he does ultimately get his battle with megatron who gets megatronus who's one of the primes t cog is transforming cog and gives him a sort of power and they go at it head to head i think the action in this battle was freaking amazing like i loved every second of it it took me back to the old 80s cartoon it took me back to my favorite moments in the video games it even took me to some of the decent moments in some of the Bay films yeah i said it it had some decent action moments that's what they're good for it was a great battle i like the way it turned out one other thing that i did like about the film even though it had its bits of comedy here and there was it did have its really dark moments and allowing Megatron to kill Sentinel Prime in a way he did was something that I was hoping through the whole film that they would do. I didn't know if they were going to do it. I thought he was going to get stopped before he killed them. But I feel like it's very important to express just how dangerous Megatron is and his descent and what he is willing to do for his beliefs. And I think this sets a strong precedent for the film going forward because Megatron is a force to be reckoned with. And he's not someone to play around with. He's not one of those villains where... Uh, he never really gets his guys like you can die messing around with Megatron and this set the standard here and for everyone who follows him they know Megatron is willing to go all the way for what he believes in I think that was a great great piece for his character the film ends of course with Optimus defeating Megatron and telling him basically you're excommunicated you're exiled get the heck out of here you and all your followers whatever you want to do just leave because Optimus killing Megatron wouldn't make sense because he's tried to stop Megatron from killing Sentinel Prime. This was the only part of the story that got a little screwy for me. It was kind of like if anybody watched the ending of Game of Thrones where everything just kind of was like going one way with the war. Then it's just like someone just blew a gasket because Megatron went in to tear down and destroy the whole city. I mean, I get his anger and he believed everything was a lie, but I really didn't fully understand maybe i missed it maybe it was something going on i was in a theater that serves food it was pretty good but um i didn't really see why he was going so hard on destroying icon city completely like it was where you lived it is cybertron at the end of the day some of these other mind workers are your friends what was just the rage of just burn it all down like I get you angry at some of it, but you can probably still be civil. It seemed like Megatron was a pretty civil guy leading up to this. So I don't know if it was just to show that he just lost it or if it was like a time crunch because it did seem part of the movies was rushed and they just wanted to say, all right, let's just get Megatron being Megatron and just messing stuff up. So him and Optimus have a reason to fight right now. But that to me was a little bit extreme. So with that being said, let me get into my likes and dislikes overall on the film. Let's start with the likes. What I really did enjoy was the voice acting. I think everyone here from um, Ryan Tyree to Chris Hemsworth, Scarlett Johansson, Keegan-Michael Key, um, all the other actors that were in there, some great names in there. I believe Steve Buscemi was in there. I think they did a great job. This is a real, really, 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 really hard thing to follow up on because you have some really famous, iconic names who originally do the voices of these characters and they're kind of stuck and embedded in everyone's head so much. So to follow up with that, you can't really compete with trying to sound like these original Megatron or Optimus or even Starscream. So what everyone did is kind of just sat back 
They were themselves and they brought themselves into the character and it actually worked. I think it was pretty good how they did it. I wasn't disappointed and it is so easy to disappoint on the voices of these characters because they are so iconic and their voice actors are so iconic. Another thing that I liked was the visuals. It wasn't overly done. It wasn't super realistic or anything like that, but it made Cybertron feel like it was another place. I didn't feel like Cybertron was just some weird video game world that they just blocked together. It felt alive. The characters, they, you've seen the similarities and the differences, and it felt like these are a race of robots, and it was pretty good. Some of the areas were a little desolate and kind of gave me those original Beast War vibes, especially on the surface of the planet, but I understand why it was that way. So, you know, when you do these computer animated things, it's always, how do you make it feel real? And I feel like summer parts, it really, really felt real. Some parts, eh, they weren't too great, but overall, I would say the visuals in this film were pretty good. Lastly, what I want to say that I really liked about the movie was the humor. Originally seeing the trailers, I thought the humor was just going to be too much for me. It was going to take me out the film. It wasn't going to feel like Transformers and it was just going to be downright silly. But after watching the film, I felt the humor was pretty much spot on. It had its great moments. It didn't really have too many awkward moments. And the humor was pretty funny. And it was just the right amount to not take me out the film and the stakes of the film and feel like, okay, this is completely just like just put this on nickelodeon right now it still felt like a theatrical film that an older audience can enjoy without being drowned out by too much silly humor so i think they did a really good job with that and i hope in future films they're able to maintain having that level of humor without taking it over the top okay let's go over the dislikes i'm gonna be honest there's not a lot that i disliked about this film like i loved it it was freaking amazing to me this is a great film in my eyes but of course no film is perfect so I can say some things that I think could have been a little better, and that was the pacing. The film kept you interested throughout the whole film, but some parts I feel were a bit rushed, like the meeting with Starscream and the High Guard and things like that. I would have loved it to be fleshed out a little more because there's so much there. And Megatron's descent from being this by-the-book guy into Megatron tear it all down, I feel like was a bit rushed. And I can possibly be due to time constraints. This movie had a time of one hour and i believe 51 minutes which is kind of long for an animated film it's almost hitting that two hour mark that everyone dreads and it was still so much i felt like there was so much more that could have been in there they actually could have probably split this one film into two possibly three films with as much material as they could have fit in there because i was there for it all i wanted to see it more and i just felt like after the first act, things moved along really quickly. Then it was just like a dry period. Then it was just like throw everything in my face. And yeah, I, I kind of wish the timing and the pacing was a little bit better. We got a little more development on all the characters, even Sentinel Prime. I felt like they could have done a lot more there. But for timing reasons, I see why they may not have. And really, that's basically the only thing I disliked about the film. Everything else was pretty good. They could have did a little more character development here and there with the primes i would love for them to do a film based on the primes because that's something i never really got in the transformers cartoons or the films that are currently out like we can get a whole great story on the primes and i think this is the medium to do it in i really don't necessarily need it in live action i think doing it in this medium will give us a great story and visuals but as far as this film alone that's basically it i think that is the main thing and maybe i would have liked for them to kind of push the Decepticon thing a little more and how he got to the name but that's just a little anecdote here and there and if you watch the after credit scenes you kind of see what you want to see but I guess that's really for the next movie so now if I have to give this movie a rating I'm not going to say that it's hard to do at all I've made up my mind my mind hasn't changed since I've seen it the rating is just pretty simple for me this movie is a solid nine and I would even say 9.2 because whatever the music wasn't that much music, wasn't oversaturated. The acting, the visuals, the comedy, everything we got out of it, the lore, it was just a great film all around. And I think a nine, but I'm going to say 9.2 because I'm giving points now because it's so hard with these films. But I think this film is just a solid, amazing film that will hold up and stand the test of time. Um, I would say I'll have to compare it to the other great film that I've seen this year which was Deadpool and Wolverine, which I also think is in that high bracket. But the only thing about that is I think 
the jokes and things in that film probably won't age well. Five, 10, 15 years from now, I don't think people will get those reactions out of everything because it's so much pop culture and current events in that film. Where Transformers, I feel like this is a timeless classic. You can put this movie 20 years ago or 20 years in the future. The point is still going to get across. Everything's still going to hit the emotions, the feelings, uh, all the concepts and ideas that are brought forth. It was just great. It was a great film. They did a wonderful job. I hope we get sequel after sequel after sequel and they build and get better and better and better. And I just want to see this continue so much. Like I, I wish there was more when I walked out the theater. I was just like, man, I wish this was a Netflix show or something so I could continue and binge the rest of it. So shout out to them for doing this. This is a great movie. And I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments how you felt about everything. What characters you liked that you didn't like? What are the things that you think they should have done or didn't do or did do the really great or shouldn't have did? And um, yeah, that's about it. Let's hope we get more of the quintessons later on and world, world building or world building and world building. All right, guys, that was my quick spoiler review on Transformers 1. Like I said, tell me what you think. Like, comment, subscribe and stick around. I got a lot more to come.